All right, guys, welcome to our FitBanker Masterclass. You're joining a Masterclass, which is uh, an explainer webinar. It's a webinar that explains a little bit about us as an organization, what we do. We're going to share some results and at a very high level and very quickly, I would love to go through and understand a little bit about you. Like, why does health matter to you? What would you want to do if you had peak health? So in a few moments, I'm going to ask that, but I'm also going to share my story. I'm going to share my story, why I do this, what is my background, what is my backstory, and we'll share some results of people that have done the program, what they've accomplished. Uh, but it is important for this to be relevant to you, that each of you think about what, what is it you would do with peak energy, peak strength, peak confidence. Why would you want to transform your health in any case? So to kick off this beautiful quote by Thomas Edison, the guy that invented the light bulb, and uh, he was considered a genius, a brain box of his time. He's somebody that actually was an inventor, an innovator. He actually owns the largest number of patents. Um, and he has this beautiful quote, which when he was somebody the world turned to for advice, just like today, a lot of people turn to the likes of uh, Bill Gates or Elon Musk or other entrepreneurs today, um in those days his view of the medical world was the doctor of the future will give no medicine but will interest his patient in the care of the human frame in diet and the cause and prevention of disease and now fast forward almost 120 years later today's medical system and today's doctors are nowhere near or like this we aren't in a world where we're dealing with doctors uh, in this regard, we're often going to the doctors or medical system when we need something fixing, when something is broken, when it's slightly too late, or we're getting on medication, and we tend to stay on there without a clear course of how to get off the medication. And so FitBank came about to kind of be this organization that has a proactive and preventative approach. So uh, that's me and my wife, Ambika. Uh, FitBanker exists to empower humanity to live a life of optimal health through lifestyle education, and we're on a mission to transform a billion lives. Um, if you guys are on Instagram, if there's anything you see or like, feel free to screenshot this. Anything you want to screenshot, you can tag us uh, at fitbanker.co or at Dr. Ambika Sampat. I'm also going to share some slides, and if you want any of the individual slides in high resolution, like there's some recipes or, that I might share or work out, then feel free to reach out to us on Instagram. And we will also share that with you. Uh, FitBank have been coaching individuals and we're now working with corporates. Uh, we are a leader in our, the way we do this. And uh, we've been very successful in our results as well in getting people connected to way beyond weight loss, but getting them connected to an optimal world and life, living a life connected to their purpose, health, integrity. And the way we deliver our programs is through team and teamwork. And so we'll explain a little bit about that. And it's our spelling of the word fit so uh, phit purpose health integrity and team so that's me on the left that was me at 108 kg 40 to 41 inch waist in my view i was successful then and if you spoke to me then and told me hey ronnie you need to do something about your body or your health i would have told totally ridiculed you i'd have made mockery out of that i would have probably made some joke not to go deeper in that conversation but something really shifted for me and when i had that moment that shifted for me i rewired my context as to why my health matters and so if all of you think about your health as just a thing to quickly get to like lose six kg or get a six pack that's a short-term goal i want you to think about your health as it's a useful resource it's a tool to serve this body and mind for peak performance through life so what is that why you would apply yourself to if you were with peak energy, peak strength, and peak confidence. If your why is not clear, like why would I want to have peak energy? Why would I want to have more strength or be as strong as, as I possibly can? Why would I want to be extremely uber confident? I'm saying to you that's possible through transforming your health, but what will you apply it to? If you're clear on that, then it becomes really easy to go through your health journey. And through my transformation, it took me seven months. We we're talking about a 90 day program, but it took me seven months. I do recommend people work on this program three times in a row. So 90 days, 90 days, 90 days is my personal recommendation. And each time you do it, it's cheaper. Um, uh, but the first one is, is a significant investment. If your why is clear, 
then the how is easy. So you cannot commence any transformation journey without a very clear why. So this is a question for you. And I want you to visualize and imagine. And I want you guys to come off mute in a second and just share with me what's what first comes to mind when I say, what would you do if you could imagine yourself doing something you love, something you're passionate about, or maybe something new you've never tried, but you discover it and you're feeling so in your zone, but you have peak energy, you have peak strength, more strength than you've ever experienced yourself have, and a lot more confidence. What is it you would engage yourself into? What would you try that you've possibly never tried before? Or maybe it was something you did before and you want to get back into it. And I asked myself this question. I was actually lying in a hospital bed. I was 33 years old at the time and I'm in a hospital bed. And I was so clear, like, what on earth have I done? How have I wound up here? And this is so not the definition of success. And I was very clear that I would rather be doing something else. And what I visioned at the time with peak energy, strength and confidence was climbing up a mountain. I had my two boys in tow. And that mountain that I visualized was Mount Kilimanjaro. I'd never been up Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, I never planned to go. And I didn't have any, any kids. Well, fast forward eight years. Uh, I now have two boys. I've now gone up the mountain with both my boys. I've gone up with my three-year-old up to 4,000 meters. And my 20-month-old, we've taken him to 2,700 meters on the mountain. We've not been permitted by the park authorities to go beyond that for their age. But I am planning to go again with my five-year-old son for a world record. So to create something new, we really need to alter that inner understanding as to why is this useful? So why would your health be useful to you? So that's a question to both of you. Um, either of you can raise your virtual hand or unmute. I'd love to hear from you what first comes to mind. What would you do if you had peak energy, peak strength and peak confidence? Jad? Uh, hmm. For me, what would I do? For me, I'll probably try to get into like the NBA or something. The NBA. Amazing. Like in the future. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and I would love to be at the source of somebody that inspired you, got you trained, and gave you the right nutrition, but the mindset above all to be ready to get there. Shital, just for your information, Jad is somebody whose uh, mom uh, reached out to me. I connected recently on social media. She's also into her health, and Jad is 14 years old. And, uh, and he really wants to start to get stronger. He wants to uh, also get a six pack and he would love to be a lot more energetic. He loves his basketball and he plays football. Um, and I would love to contribute to his success journey, but he's at such the right age and ripe age to have that yearning right now. So I'd love to contribute to him uh, if I can through, through our coaching program. Uh, Sheetal, how about you? You're on mute. Oh, um... Yeah, um, so for myself, um, I've actually gone through that kind of whole healthy mindset and um, uh, kind of a journey um, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago um, to where I started. I never thought I could run, never, ever have in my life. Um, so I started running. I would love to run half a marathon. That's my short-term goal. Yeah. Um, and climb mountains. I, I lived in nature for a very long time and I want to climb back to Mount Kilimanjaro, which I failed at 16, which I briefly mentioned to you before. So to yeah. me, that would be a success. And I have an 18 year old son. Mm -hmm. He's fit as a fiddle. Um, I'm possibly not there yet. So I would love one day for both of us to go back right to the top, which is where my roots are from. Awesome. Like I said to you, we're going in August. You're welcome. Jad, you're also welcome to join us on Kilimanjaro. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And we have, we have eight months to prepare. So almost nine months to prepare. So brilliant. Why am I asking this to you? Because the way the human mind, the human psyche works is we are always pulled or incentivized to something. As hunter-gatherers, if we saw an attractive fruit in a tree, we gravitated towards that. If we were hunting for some meat and we saw some wildlife, we gravitated towards that. If we saw some shelter, and we needed that, we'd gravitate. So water, we'd go to what we saw was essential or necessary for us. The same works with how we're driven today. If we can visualize or see that possible potential, that's called our inspiration. And so there are three things that will cause uh, us to be pulled forward, which is inspiration will get us forward to move in that direction. Information is what are the steps we need to take to get there, whether it's a fruit, whether it's meat, whether it's a goal, whether it's a mountain, whether it's the NBA. The third thing is implementation. You need a structure, you need a plan. 
And whatever you're doing without a plan is also a plan, but that plan will lead you somewhere haphazard. If you have very clear visualization and vision, and we can have that clarity, it will get us to where we want to go. But if you look at it, if, that, if what I'm saying is true, if you look today at your current life, our current body and our current lifestyle, at some point, we imagined, visualized, accepted or tolerated to say, that's acceptable, that's possible, that's allowable. I could live in that neighborhood, I could buy that kind of a car, I could go to that kind of a school. And we subconsciously said, it's okay to do with. It wasn't a stretch goal. It wasn't something really intentionally pulled for, or it might have been. And what we have today, our energy levels, our physique, our family status, our uh, confidence, our um, business, our job, our wealth was something we saw, imagined, visualized subconsciously. What we do on our program is want you to consciously declare a vision or visual. We do actually create vision boards on our program in webinar two, and then we start to create a structure and a plan to get us there. So to create something new, we need to alter the inner work. We need to work on the internal uh, BS, the internal belief system. Uh, and that's how I got myself from being a fat banker to fit banker. And when I say that, this is not the first time I tried to transform my health. I tried in the past. And all I wanted to do was to go train manically thinking it was all about the training. And I failed. And I did it multiple times and I failed. But something shifted here. I'm going to share my story of how I went from being a fat banker in 2014 to that's me in 2015. Uh, I used to work for JP Morgan. I was vice president there in London. Uh, I was with them for six years, but before that, about uh, had another six, seven years in the world of finance and audit. Uh, I started my career in Zambia, but as I worked in London, moved across Europe, did some projects in New York, who and how I wound up was this guy. But my internal belief and my internal mantra subconsciously too was work hard, party harder. So I would definitely put the hours in at work, 12 hour days, 10 hour days, 14 hour days, 16 hour days. And then I would go and party and I'd go for my meals and eat out and drinks and restaurants and uh, some public appearances and events and speeches at weddings. That was what my life looked like. But also that person had what I would call subconscious defense mechanisms. So we sometimes do things and show people in the world around us so they don't come too close to us. So they don't talk to us about that area. So I would still show people, despite me getting overweight, I felt I couldn't do anything about it. I felt I was trying everything to do with my physique. I would show to the world, look, I can still party, work and party harder. I still climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, my first attempt uh, at 103 kg. And by virtue of me reaching the top, I was blown away as to how I pulled that off. And uh, at 2014, uh, that was me doing what I call the uh, Daniel Craig pose coming out of a beach in New Zealand, right? And I say Daniel Craig and I use self-deprecating humor. So I would make mockery of myself and I would make all these poses and humorous pictures about me because we also use humor to disguise or block people from speaking to us about something very seriously that matters to us. So sometimes we joke about it. So when people say, hey, Ronnie, you're out of shape, I'll say, what do you mean? Round is a shape. You know, I would bring these little uh, humorous lines just so that they don't get serious with me about that particular area. And living that life, living that defensive mindset and mechanism, this is a, a picture from the Fringe Festival. And the Fringe Festival is this event that happens in Edinburgh and Scotland where the whole world comes together for entertainment, for drama, for performances, for game, for humor. Comedians come there and we went there for the whole month of August. Every hall, outdoor tents, every open arena is turned into a play for, place for performances. And we went there after we got married, my wife and I. It was Ambika's birthday, so I thought perfect getaway for her birthday. We were, it was also our first break after honeymoon. And the icing on the cake at that time, we just found out was that we were three months pregnant. And with three months pregnant, I thought perfect place to go to Scotland and take this photo in Edinburgh with the castles in the backdrop. And it would make an amazing photo to share to the world our nice little scan of our baby to say we're going to become parents. And while I saw this beautiful, bright future and we had that amazing weekend there planned, we went there. And while we were there, the universe had other plans. We had a miscarriage. We uh, lost our little one. It was a crushing moment for us, and I was not prepared for this. And so in the prior photos, I show you how I'm physically resilient and able to do stuff. But when we had this miscarriage, I realized I was not emotionally resilient. And I got these heart palpitations, and the following day, they carried on through the night, and the following day, I ended up in hospital. 
And this is me, that same successful guy who thought success was my title, my bank balance, my salary, the company I worked for. And here I am lying in a hospital bed and I am uh, awaiting blood tests. I'm going through an ECG test. And as I lay in this hospital bed, I'm thinking to myself, God, this is so not the definition of success. And I would rather be, and the vision and visual I had was climbing Mount Kilimanjaro with my boys. In that moment, we've just lost our baby. And as I'm sat there, I can see my wife, she sat on the chair, it's three in the morning. And I'm saying to her, I can see her dozing off the chair, almost falling off. And I'm saying to her, can you get up, go to sleep at home in a proper bed and come back tomorrow and because everything will be okay. And she just snaps at me. She goes, there's no way I'm waking up tomorrow having lost another one. And for the first time, my view, my cockiness, my view of myself thinking, I know it all, don't talk to me about health completely was cr crumbled or transformed because I got that my banking on my fitness, there are other people that bank on me. When we, each of you take care of your well-being, you might have children that bank on you, you might have siblings that bank on you, you might have an elder that bank on you, or you might have a, a business or organization mission that you want to grow up and be uh, and play for that banks on you. It banks on you being fit. It banks on you being able to show up every day. I got to show up on this webinar uh, and on all our webinars uh, whether clients do or not, right? Shittal joined us on Thursday and thanks Shittal for being on again today. Um, and I have to show up daily in our business to serve our clients, to empower them to really be the best version of themselves uh, so that they can be the best in what they do. In that moment, we lost our baby, but it was the birth of my interest in my nutrition, in body composition, in fat loss and muscle mass. I started to implement everything. I started to research and learn. I lost 20 kg. So the image on the left, I'm already 20 kilos lighter. Then I found an online body competition. I threw my body tra transformation competition, threw my photo in, and 90 days later, that was the photo for the transformation I created. I won that competition. It was quite publicly done on social media, and it led to a flurry of interest, it led to people reaching out. What did you do? How did you train? And that kind of went viral, semi-viral on social media, and it was the birth of FitBanker. I had just left banking, I had gone through this health scare a year earlier, and I was really looking at my next project. And suddenly this opportunity came where people are reaching out to me to say, hey, can you tell me what I can eat? How do I train? Can I do this? And I found that they kept asking me the same questions. But even if I give them a meal plan, even if I tell them what to eat, even if I give them the training program, that document, that PDF often just sat in their inbox. They didn't do much about it. What made the difference was the implementation. And I found that we could weekly check in on people, hold them accountable. This is a doctor. She has all the science and wisdom in her mind. She's a GP. She did our program. She lost 9.1 kg. She's again doing it again. This was in 2015. She did it. She's now on the 2022 challenge. Six, seven years later, she's doing it again. This is Ellie. She lost 11.3. She went on to lose 20 kg. Her goal was to get into acting. So when you're saying you want to get into the NBA, this lady said she wants to become an actor. She transformed her health. She got into a musical in uh, West End, and now she's become a screenwriter for uh, theater in London. This, these guys are called the Fit Doctors. They would do this annual men's health drive. They drive around the US, they'd get the Tesla, drive from uh, Florida to New York, and they run these camps talking about health for men's health, they're urologists. But they didn't look or embody or feel healthy themselves. They did my program, the guy on the left lost 53 pounds, the guy on the right lost 36 pounds. They're doctors, they know this stuff, but they didn't have the implementation. So it's not the information, it's not what you know, it's being held accountable. Then there's this lady, she wanted to, she's been overweight all her life, does our program. She loses 15.8 kg, becomes the female record holder at the time. And then she says, I now want to sign up to Kilimanjaro. While still a bit overweight, signs up to Kilimanjaro, does Kilimanjaro, one of the hardest treks, our first leadership summit. She was the last person to reach the top. But as we say in Swahili, pole pole, which means slowly she got to the top. And so these are examples of what happens when you take on your health and you have an implementation and accountability structure around you. This is a mom of two. After her second born, she struggled to lose her postpartum weight. She was 75 kg when she signed up. The image on the left is when she signed up. Then she was very hesitant to start and she kept postponing a start date. And eventually she signed, after giving us some tips, she lost 3.6 kg. She signs up day one. One program and 30 days later, she gets down to 50 kg. Like I say, I do recommend doing the program at least three times just to reinforce 
the knowledge and make it subconscious. Uh, but we deliver all the content in 90 days. For some people, they do one program. I do recommend three programs. Um, and she went down. So one third of this lady has disappeared from 75 kg down to 50 kilos. And then this old man, I call him dad. He was 92, 93 kg when he started. He's on cholesterol medication. He has high BP medication. He was on 22 tablets a day. And every Christmas, we'd give him a new pill box, which had Monday to Sunday labeled out in the time of the day uh, as to what medication he should take. That was an ideal gift for him. Well, fast forward uh, four and a half months, he lost 14.5 kg. The medication I was working against him, the statins were working against him. They were having side effects because he's naturally healed his heart, heart and he's on medication. He went for a review. The doctors got him off the medication. That was in 2016. It's now 2022. He's six years off medication. At 76, we went up Mount Kilimanjaro with him. He's the younger, he's the oldest Zambian to attempt Mount Kilimanjaro. He didn't get to the top, but at 76, he reached 3,720 meters. Then there's Urvi, somebody from Kenya. She's lost about 19 kg. She's now actually 51 kilos. She told me to update this image. I haven't yet updated it. Uh, but she did this challenge. She started the challenge while breastfeeding her second born. While breastfeeding, she took on the program. She did two challenges back to back. Then she became a coach and did her third. And now she's one of our most successful coaches uh, in Kenya. She's more or less a business partner. She's really grown us in Kenya. And uh, coaches have an opportunity to invite others onto our program uh, and be part of our growth journey. Then there is Miral. She works for a spiritual organization. She lives in a monastery, in an ashram, where monks and nuns have come onto our program and transformed their health in their or orange robes. They've done our challenge. So it's an example of what's possible. Then there's me with my three-year-old at 3720. He's now five years old. Uh, and I'm the only Zambian to summit Mount Kilimanjaro now eight times, and I've been recognized by Zambia's president for that as well. So how do we achieve these results and why am I showing you all these results? I'm showing you all these results because I want you to see yourself in some of those people. The youngest who's done our program is a 13 year old. The oldest is an 81 year old that's done our program is now 82. And he also reversed his heart health condition. But if you want to learn something from today, I'm going to give you some tips that you can implement, but we implement these on our program. They're actually the cornerstone habits of our program. But if you really wanna grasp it, I invite you to listen with an open mind. You might've heard some of these concepts, you might've implemented some of these concepts, but consider you might know them only as a concept, as a theory. I, if you can give up what you know about them, any preconceived notion, there is a Zen or Buddhist saying, which, which says, empty your cup so that it may be filled. And then we might learn something new and different, or it might occur to you in a new format. The first thing we do with all our participants, we want to redefine what health is. Most people think health is physical activity and nutrition. So they just exercise mostly. And then they work on their diet, or they think it's about eating less. They suppress the quantity. That's not what health is. We say health has got to do with six pillars. The third pillar being sleep. The fourth pillar being mind-body connection, things like your emotions. If you've gone through a period of, say, bullying or a hard study period or a stressful relationship or financial uh, difficulty, it gets processed as ego, as resentment, as anger, as trauma, as envy. Those emotions convert in the body into our biology and then into our physiology. Then social connection, the people around us and our relationships could be our parents, could be our siblings, could be our kids, could be our partner. They influence daily the quality of our well-being because they contribute daily to our emotional and mental well-being in our conversations and relatedness with them. And lastly, the sixth pillar is what is it you do as a career or your livelihood? Are you choosing a career or have you chosen a career or are you in a career or business? That was an analytical choice, which is, hey, this makes business sense. These are good hours. That one pays well. Everybody's doing this. This is the in thing. So let me go there. Or are you pursuing your passion and your purpose? If you can do something that's aligned with your authentic nature, a, a Vedic term that we call swabhav, and your dharma, your purpose, then not a single day doing that is going to feel hard or like a burden or a chore. It will be completely enjoyable. But you will only know that once you're really connected to the question we asked at the start, which is your why. If your why is real and alive for you, and every day you're reminded of that, the reason you spring out of bed, the reason you take care of your body, the reason you will eat right will make complete sense. 
you won't go tomorrow to your tuck shop at school and eat that big sugary donut if you want to go play in the NBA. You're going to have a different mindset if that's very real and vivid for you every day. If you want to be on Mount Kilimanjaro, you're going to eat according to that. You're going to eat and train according to plan that gets you to that particular summit. Now, some of the things people have done before they've joined the Fit Banker Challenge that might have caused them results or some things people have heard of, others do, that have caused results, but short term results. And then they return back to their old self. They volley back are some of the following. People have tried various fad or yo-yo diets. By yo-yo diet is you lose a bit and then it springs back up, sometimes even more than where you started from. Or you're doing some kind of fasting or starving or suppression. Or people think, hey, I can eat what I want. Uh, I just need to burn it off on the weekend. I used to do that. And what happens on the weekend is I started to run three kilometers, then I had to run five, then I had to run seven, then eight, then 10, then 12. And then one day I ran 20 and I got real injury in my knees and my joints, my ankles. And I thought it's not sustainable to keep increasing the exercise because I keep putting on weight. But that wasn't the answer. In fact, that's a great way to cause injury and pain. Or the third one, like when I was in banking, people asked me, what are you doing about your health? You're, you're a family man now. I would actually point to my insurance policy. I would say, hey, I got an amazing insurance policy. If anything happens to me, the NHS will take care of me. That's why we moved from Africa to the West, because they got great health care. I thought that's what healthcare meant. Healthcare is not what somebody else is providing. Healthcare is what you're doing for yourself. How are you taking care of your health? How are you owning your health? The first thing we do on our program is we're going to ask you to change your nutrition, not by adding something to it, not by taking a pill or a supplement, which we talk about later. But firstly, you've got to remove the things that are causing damage in you daily. These are called inflammatory foods. This is not a new concept. If you Google what is the anti-inflammatory diet, or how do we remove foods that cause inflammation or insulin spikes in the body? A lot of foods that we consume that are marketed to us in the cereals, in the grocery stores, on news, in magazines, uh, in the media, on WhatsApp, are very high sugary foods. They have high starchy carbs. So my old routine would look like 6 or 7 a.m. I have a bowl of Frosties with sugar added to it, with milk. And I'm having that 7 a.m. It makes me feel great for the 45 minute ride to work or an hour to work. I sit at my desk in London and then I feel a crash in energy. And then I have to go for this energy bar because it says energy bar on it. And it says 11. So I have it at 10, 11 a.m. It creates another spike and another crash. And that black line you're seeing is what's our blood sugar. Every time it goes above a certain point, the body releases a hormone called insulin. Insulin's job is to push down or suppress that blood sugar spike. And then it pushes it lower than the starting point. So if you see the first dip and the next few dips, they drop lower than where it started in the morning. And then we feel low in energy and subconsciously we're conditioned to think food will give me more energy. So we go back for the next food. So the first thing we're doing is we want to stabilize your energy supply. What we do is we remove those high glycemic index carbs. We want you to eat foods with good fats, good fiber, complex carbs and high protein. If you can have foods with high protein and we give you the number that you have to nail each day, first of all, you will remove the energy spikes and crashes and we create stability. You will stop the insulin spikes and therefore you don't have significant chronic inflammation in your body. All dis-ease in the body is caused by inflammation at the start. The next thing we do is we want to educate you how to eat what we call functionally. But if you look at what we've been told to eat, this comes in our textbooks. It used to be called the E12 plate. Growing up now, they've called it the E12 guide. And it's a plate where they say everyone should eat this amount of starchy carbs, that amount of fruit and veg, that amount of dairy, that amount of pulses, lentils, fish and chicken and beans. But why is it telling everybody one piece of information? We're all so different. The only difference it's showing here is in the bottom right corner it's saying females should have 2000 calories and males should be 2500 why would a female who is 59 and a female who is five foot you know they have a almost a, a foot difference why would they have the same requirements why would somebody who's 95 kg be eating the same calories as somebody that is 60 kg you know why would a male and a female be having the same or or have only a set difference what we do in the fit packet challenge is we want you to all understand your uniqueness that you're all unique by your lifestyle, which is the hours you work, the emotional and mental stresses. Is your job physical in nature or is it mental and emotional in nature? Secondly, what's your body type? Your body type comes with a different metabolism. When I was Jad's age, you couldn't find me lean. I was always slightly chubby. I always had big thighs and I would always feel 
sluggish, lethargic, bloated. I would have a dip in energy after a meal. And I have a body type called an endomorph or mesoendomorph, right? I don't know about Jad, but Jad looks like he's got an ectomorph or ectomesomorph body type. And based on your body type, you will have a different metabolism. And I never knew the science of body types, but it's existed there in Ayurveda for thousands of years. We then teach you functional eating, which is, hey, today if I'm sat home, I don't need a lot of energy. I need to eat light foods. Or today I'm going out for a big hike or I'm going to the gym twice. I need to eat foods that will match that workout routine. And I need foods that will repair my muscle after the workout. And the only food that repairs muscle is protein. So we teach you how to eat in accordance with what your body needs. Next is we look at your body composition. So we have these body composition scales. And the body composition scale will tell you what's your starting point, what should optimal be, how do we bridge the gap? How do we get you from wherever your starting point is to optimal? So, um, uh, uh, Shital, you can get this online. You can order body composition scale. I have one here and I was telling Jad about it. And then there are multiple muscle groups, which is physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, right? So we're not just talking about physical muscle. We will talk about emotional and mental muscle, which is your habits and spiritual, which is connected to your purpose. So it's not a program that's religious in nature by any size, but we are working on various internal beliefs. So this is a picture from me and my fiance at the time at our engagement drinks. And we would go out, we would eat the same, drink, eat loads, drink loads. She probably ate more and drank more than me, but she could bangra and party the night away. And I would feel sluggish, I would feel bloated. And I was very clear that I could blame my dad that I got his guju jeans and now I'm getting this big pot belly and a triple chin. And uh, and now I'm jinxed and I'm going to be stuck with this body. So I better marry this girl before she runs off with somebody more attractive looking than me. And that's why I got engaged. So no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I realized that I was jinxed with a bad body type. I didn't know this, but I didn't know the science. So we would keep eating, eating the same foods, but we're never taught this in school that we're different by body type. I'm curious, Jad, by the way, do they teach you in school that we have different body types in science? Do they teach this now? Uh, no, they don't. They don't, yeah. I mean, no. I learned about nutrition in primary school, but I never learned about it in secondary school. And I never got told about the science of body types. It's there today in today's science manuals. When I trained as a PT, when I trained as a PT, it is in there, one page mention, but it doesn't go into how significant it is. So we uh, teach you to understand your body type, whether you're ectomorph, mesomorph, endomorph. And in Ayurveda, it's been there for thousands of years. Ayurveda is the ancient Eastern indian science around health nutrition and lifestyle and they say we have a body type that you can identify by answering certain questions of your body of your mind and also your environment and if you go to our website there's a questionnaire there uh, and you can do this free questionnaire and you'll find out what your body type is so we do this before you start a program and what we want you to do is know your starting body composition you could be lean and you might need to increase muscle mass or you could be overweight and you might need to reduce body fat percentage but all of us underneath our skin have three things. We all have fat and we need a certain amount of it. Sometimes we have extra. We all have muscle and we really need that to uphold our skeletal structure. Sometimes we have less of that. We need to increase it. And we all have bone and we need to keep good bone density. So those three things is what we can keep healthy. And that's what we coach you on to get to your optimal. And so we use two apps to record this. One is My Fitness Pal, where we record and track all the food we consume, and Runkeeper, where you record all your expenditure. Now, I've got the settings on screen, which is we don't use the default settings, so feel free to screenshot this if you want to. But what we do is we ask you to put in your age, what's your target weight, what's your starting weight. Then we ask you to tweak your macronutrients because we want you to get at least 30% of your calories coming from protein. And as we go through the program, every week we have these weekly surgery calls. That's where we customize how much protein and fat you should have or carbs, and we adjust that number. So you need to join those on Fridays to, to get that weekly coaching. Separate to that, we have webinars where we explain the underlying science. Runkeeper or another app we use called Strava is where you can record your movement, your activity. So you use those two apps, and then it tells you, this is a screenshot from my fitness pal. And if you want to know the formula to lose one pound of fat, it's here on the top right. One pound of fat is very simple. You create a 3,500 calorie deficit. Now, how do you do that? If you join me on Mount Kilimanjaro, we can do that in one day. But most of us can't do that every day. So we spread it out across a week. And what we do is we aim for 500 calorie deficit every day. And at the end of the week, 
we could create one pound of fat loss. So that number they're called 864. That is uh, in green, which means it's a deficit, which means our goal on this particular day for this person was to consume 1700 calories. They ate up, they used up 1,109 of their allowance. They increased their allowance by doing some exercise, which means they had room to eat more, but because they didn't eat, they left a deficit. And so that's how you create fat loss. And so we tell you and review, we tell you how to review and use MyFitnessPal to create that deficit and therefore over a week start to lose fat. But there's one blocker to fat loss, which is acidity in our body. And so what we ask you to do is to alkalize your body. So these are some alkaline smoothies. Again, you can screenshot these or you can message me on Instagram and I'll share with you high resolution versions of these recipes. I'll, I'll probably share with you even more recipes. But these are recipes, Green Goddess Smoothie and the Blue Beet Smoothie, which are high in vegetables. They have at least five vegetable bases in them and only two fruit. Because most of the juices, most of the packaged fruit uh, juices that we have, most of the smoothies you find in malls are very rich in fruits. They don't have vegetables in them. But the stuff that adds value to our body, that alkalizes us, that adds oxygen to our body, is the green leafy, dark leafy greens that comes from plants. You see, plants take in carbon dioxide and they give out oxygen, and it happens through the leaves, and the leaves in the process of, uh, in the presence of chlorophyll through a process called photosynthesis, give out oxygen. And that oxygen, we start to get it in us when we consume those dark leafy greens when they're fresh. But fruit has a lot of fructose and a lot of acid, so they're bad for the teeth, and in high volume, they give us too much fruit sugar. So fruit in moderation is good. We should have two servings of fruit a day, but we need to keep the fruit under control and we wanna have more dark leafy greens. That starts to alkalize the body and an alkaline environment is better for energy, better for our bodily performance and functioning. Next, I wanna to talk to you about a chemical process that we all have as a default setting inside of us. It's called thermogenesis. Thermogenesis is this process that happens inside of your fat cells Thermo means heat and genesis means to generate the origin of. And in seven minutes, you can generate energy stored in your fat cells out of your fat cells by triggering thermogenesis. There are three things you have to achieve in your workout to trigger this. Most people do a lot of exercise, regularly exercise, and you know people who've been going to the gym or working out or playing sport for the last five, 10, 15 years, but there's no change in the body. And the reason is they're not triggering these three things. They have to trigger breathlessness. So are they getting to a point where they're, and they've reached the end of what's called the aerobic threshold and then they need to put down the weight or stop or put their hands on their knees to catch their breath back. That's the level of push we need to get to. Number two, are they raising the body temperature and triggering a, a sweat breakout? So they are losing water through the body, which is comes from our fat. And the third one is, are they raising their heart rate at least over 60% of what's called your max heart rate and pushing it up to 90%? And if you're oscillating in a workout between 60 to 90 in seven minutes, you can trigger fat loss. And we do workouts that are designed on this. You can either do the seven minute workout as it's shown on screen, 40 seconds of work for each exercise with a 20 second gap. Try it out just for seven minutes. See how intense that workout turns out for you when you do 40 seconds of work and only a 20 second gap before you move to the next one, you'll see how intense seven minutes can be. And if you can do one round, we recommend you try three rounds. But if you want to try workouts with us live on that group on Facebook called Fit Banker Transforming a Billion Lives, you can do all workouts there on catch up. We live stream them there every day. You can join us on Zoom every day. We do eight workouts a week. Um, and, uh, and that will allow you, they're designed to help you trigger thermogenesis. Finally, I'm about to wrap up and I'm about to tell you what happens uh, when you sign up to the Fit Banker Challenge. What do you get? But before we do, I want to tell you something about the culture that we encourage people to do. We are committed to transforming a billion lives in our mission statement. One of the ways we do that is we invite people to share their journey so that they can inspire and empower others to also take on health. We can positively signal on social media the things that we value. You're either going to put up images of you smoking shisha or drinking champagne or eating a big pizza uh, or uh, uh, a Big Mac and fries, and you will tell the world, this is what I value and normalize it. Or you might put green smoothies or you working out in the gym like this doctor that did our program. He was always on call, yet he found time 
to work out and share his journey and he went on to lose 53 pounds when we share psychologically our brain starts to be become more consistent we start to push harder and further because we want to demonstrate to people what we value and we also alter their perception of us we create a new listing and a new brand image of ourselves and so we do ask you voluntarily for you to share your journey with others to inspire and empower others now as i invite you to do that some people even at the thought of sharing on social media get confronted some people at the thought of signing up to a new program get confronted some people at the thought of having to shake up their daily routine maybe waking up early maybe walking longer maybe training more uh, one extra day a week get stopped in their mind because the mind's job is to pull you back to your comfort zone your mind right now is listening to a possible new approach but it wants to tell you what it's already familiar with hey we can lie in on saturday and sunday we don't need to work out four days a week or five days a week i don't need to walk that much it's either too cold or too hot where i am and you bring reasons to put you back into your comfort zone it's called a self-sabotage mechanism and so your self-sabotage is a function of your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is trying to pull you back to familiar to keep you safe. So you will say things like, hey, I'd love to do that this week, Ronnie, but I'm too busy. Uh, I don't have time. I can't afford that. I can't afford the supplements. I can't get that scale, whatever it is. Or you do everything by design. And after you finish your amazing workout, you walk into the cafe, you go to a pistachio cafe or a Starbucks, and you over reward yourself with a blueberry muffin and a frappuccino and you burn 300 calories in the gym and then you consume 800 calories and then you say ronnie the gym's not working for me it's not the gym it's the 800 calories that you're consuming after and so what we want you to do is to understand these and our coaches are trained to call you out and catch you when you're doing that but what i provided you with is a key information on our program of the key pillars that makes a difference uh, but information is everywhere what really makes a difference is implementation. And Aristotle, the philosopher, has this beautiful quote. He says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So what actually causes results in life? As results and performance coaches, right? Firstly, you have to commit and take action to get out of your current routine. You have to discontinue your current lifestyle and routine that you're doing. Number two, immerse yourself in an empowering environment. Surround yourself with an inspiring community, which is the online world that we connect you with so many people globally. You'll be part of a global community on WhatsApp and Facebook. Uh, and then we provide you weekly and daily habits to incorporate. You might be doing some of these already, like walking 10,000 steps a day or working out with weights. And we do recommend at least four days of working out. And if you're doing that, then, you know, well done and kudos to you. Um, but that's what makes a difference. Now, when you sign up to the FitBanker Challenge, and I'm going to invite, I, I do invite you guys to join. Uh, I would love for you to join the program. That's why you're here today. That's why I'm here today. Um, and this, it is my invite because I'm very clear how our program works and it will serve you and optimize your well-being, but it will start to inspire your family members and your friends around you. Uh, we have 10 webinars just like this one. So the way you've listened to me now is the way you're going to listen to me for 10 webinars. Two of them are run by my wife or, or others in, in our team. Uh, we will do a body type assessment. We'll send you a link to do a body type assessment according to Ayurveda and bodybuilding. We'll give you meal plan ideas that look like this image on screen. This is an image of a meal plan idea for somebody who is a pescatarian. Uh, and these are just the lunch options. We give you similar for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, snack ideas. Now, I can share this on screen. I can even send you the PDF right now without you signing up. And why am I not bothered about that? Because that's not the answer. So a lot of people come to me and they say, give me a training plan, give me the diet plan. I'm saying that stuff is free. In fact, you can find that stuff on Google if you want to. These are ours, right? But that's not what makes the difference. What makes the difference is the weekly accountability and implementation. We even provide our workouts free. The workouts that I'm talking about, that Facebook group, they're free to join. They're free for you to follow and join. We spend about $500, 500 pounds a month paying our trainers, but we're offering them free. We started them in lockdown as a contribution to community and we've carried on running them free. Uh, so those are the daily Zoom. You can also join us on Zoom for those. Uh, and Jad, when your holidays start, if you're home, if you wanna join those, you can join those. Uh, once you sign up to the program, uh, you'll get to join this Facebook group called FitBank Campus. On there, there are various things like recipes, workouts, other people's posts and inspiration. 
you get put then in a smaller coach. We have a team of coaches, about 50 plus of them globally. You'll join a WhatsApp group with your group accountability coach, and they run weekly accountability calls. So you have to get on Zoom with them once a week and you update them on your actions, what worked, what didn't work, what are you recommitting to? And then every Friday, you have another opportunity. It's optional, but you can join me Friday lunchtime, 1 p.m., Friday night, 7 p.m., uh, and they're called Friday lunch and Friday night surgeries. And that's where you come and ask hot seat Q&A, or you just come and listen to other people's questions, and you learn so much from what they ask. So that's what the Fit Banker Challenge involves. Uh, I would invite you to sign up at Fit Banker. I am inviting you to sign up at fitbanker.com forward slash go. That's the page to sign up to the next program starting now in six weeks, exactly six weeks from now. Or is it five weeks? Sorry, I think it's five weeks now, uh, 9th of January. And um, and you can, uh, people have done this program to transform the health. This is a diabetic who was on insulin, reversed that. She was labeled pre-diabetic and she was about to be labeled type two for the same readings. She's now free of that label and free of those medications. She also transformed her purpose and her livelihood. She left working as a phlebotomist in the lab that diagnosed her, and she now works as a real estate agent. Uh, this is Ushma, somebody who was struggling with fertility. She wanted to, uh, they had one child, they wanted baby number two. They tried for five years, no luck. The IVF clinic would not accept her because she was overweight. Her BMI was over a certain number, so they, they didn't accept her. She did our program and by week 10, she was given the go ahead. She had lost about 11 kg over her challenge. She was given the go ahead to join the um, IVF process. She joined it and they wanted just one more, but as luck would have it, she ended up having twins. And when the twins were five months old, I was out in Zambia. I'd come down to Zambia and Lusaka. I was there to interview her and meet her. And because they were told they could never conceive naturally, they kept doing their nocturnal activities and found out that at that point in time when the twins were five months old, she was pregnant for the first time naturally with baby number four. So she went from one baby to four babies in a window of 20 months. And I often joke with her and say faster than a BMW. So that's an example of what's possible when you transform your health. And then there's Jagdish Bhai, 73 year old. He has mobility issues with his knees. He's diabetic, he's on a diabetic medication called metformin, and he is uh, been on four metformins a day. He has to take four doses a day. He's reduced that down to one metformin a day. He shows up on our weekly workouts, does two or three workouts a week at the age of 73. So if your excuses, I've got an injury or mobility issues or age, if this guy can do it and my dad does it at 77, all of you can do it. Then there's Vera. She is somebody who has got the female record. She lost 18.8 kg in 90 days uh, and then we have some male record holders it's not a weight loss program but these are the weight loss records uh, this is Vijay he lost 25 kilos in 90 days in 90 days he went on to lose 35 kg and then we have um, JC Jitesh who lost uh, 26.3 kg in 90 days so I'm sharing with you some amazing results of what's possible when you're being held to account and checked in on every week that's the Olympians are the people that get coaches Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Usain Bolt, are those are the kinds of people that have coaches. Cristiano Ronaldo has a coach, right? That's what causes results. So if you want to grow out of the current state you're in, I am inviting you to join this amazing coaching program. And it will serve you in many areas, whatever your goals might be, whether it's health or just more energy, strength, and confidence. Uh, nobody ever wrote down a plan to be fat, overweight, and unwell. But as you can see from my image on the left, that is what happens when you don't have a plan. So I am inviting you guys to, to join this very structured program. Uh, I am talking about the group program, which costs $1,299. And the early bird is about to open at 697. And the mega early bird is something we're running now. You're signing up a whole month prior. There's a benefit of getting in early. And that one is on at 497. It starts on 9th January. So we're literally talking five weeks and two days away the program starts and once you've signed up you can forget about it and we see you in the first week of january you'll get a couple of emails in between two emails which help you do your setup and get you ready for the beginning of the program so any questions i'm going to pause now before i wrap up i've been i've been doing most of the speaking but just rushing through and i do want to check in with both of you uh jad or, Sh or shital any questions that you have Uh, about the fit banker 
Yeah. Uh, I'm a little bit too young to use the app. <laughs> uh, which one? Uh, for Fit Banker. Uh, you, I'm not you sure. You mean my fitness pal? My fitness pal, yeah, my fitness pal, sorry. Yeah, my so what I would is. tell you to do, my fitness pal is just use that as a record of the foods you've eaten. So for now, unfortunately, you'd have to put your age there at 16 or, or 18 or whatever it allows as the lower age, just so I can monitor how much you've recorded each week, right? Um, and, and if you have any issues with that, then an alternate in your case would have to be that you start to write it down manually. So we're just using that as a place to tabulate it. There's a part yeah. where you take your diary and you share your diary, then I can review what you've recorded in the week. And I can give you feedback to say, hey, Jad, that cake that you had or those four slices of cake you had are not a good idea. Maybe next week we don't have them, you know? So that's uh, the benefit of recording it. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, any any other questions, Jad or Shito? No? I think you've covered it all. That's really interesting. So like I said, when I joined the group, um, I wasn't sure I was on the correct group, um, but it was recommended. Um, but yeah, I think you have answered all the questions. So that's really good. Thank you. Okay, cool. You're welcome. So for those of you that want to sign up, this is the link. Uh, Jad, I'll message mom with a link as well uh, and uh, the option for you to join. And uh, they'll, you know, I'd love to take you on Jad starting 9th Jan. But anyway, um, Shital, for your benefit, Jad lives about 100 meters away from me or 150 meters. So hopefully I can also get some gym sessions with him together as well. Uh, and I'm just grateful to have met his mom and him recently. So hopefully, hopefully I can so see you can keep him. an eye on all his activity as well. <laughs> awesome. Well, he, he should be joining me for outdoor runs now. I, I, I want his mom to approve that the streets of Kitwe are safe and then we can go for a run together. Awesome. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up. I want to thank you guys for both being on. Uh, one of the things that used to stop me was my concern around valuation of certain things. And I didn't value health. And so this quote by Dalai Lama really inspired me. And when asked what surprised him most about humanity, the Dalai Lama answered man because he sacrifices his health in order to make money. And I went through that journey and I realized that in a hospital bed in my mid 30s, then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. And then he is so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present. The result being that he does not live in the present or the future. He lives as if he's never going to die and then dies having never really lived. So on that note, it is a wrap. Uh, thanks both for being on and really grateful to connect with you both. Um, as mentioned earlier, there's the link and you also, you, have, you also have me on Instagram if you need to connect with anything. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you Thank so you. much. You're welcome. Really Thank, you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Thanks, Bye. Chad. Bye.